during CNN, uh, something like an advertisement, an ad, Islam and democracy. And some people, uh, a few ministers from different country, countries, uh, are responsible of Islamic community in, U in the US, were quoted short. What's going on in international discussion about Islam and democracy? What have you been observing in the last few weeks, months? Yes, big question. And of course, I have observed a lot because I travel all over the Islamic world, which is the world itself, since Indonesia to Morocco and since uh, Central Asia, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan to South Africa, or everywhere where you have uh, Muslims, either Muslim minorities or all the country uh, are Muslim. And the main issue, of course, today is democracy. How to make all these societies, which are all own societies with their own cultures, languages, traditions, history, colonial history or independent history, all these countries are now moving or claiming to move towards democratic institutions. This is definitely true for all societies. But of course, there are many resistance or many enabling historical, cultural, political situations, enabling, uh, disa disabling, excuse me, not enabling, disabling, rather disabling, which make this aspiration towards democratic in institutions almost impossible. Difficult everywhere, very difficult everywhere, and almost impossible in some situations. So this is the contradiction. And People are asking for freedom, are asking for the respect of human rights as we know it now everywhere, as it is expressed not only in the West but also in these societies. But to move in that direction, there are resistance, difficulties, economic, cultural, political the, 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 the difficulties, and this is generating struggles inside the society. For example, what's going on in my own country, Algeria, is exactly this. Because Algeria, of course, has been in contact with modernity through French culture, French presence, and after the independence, now 40 years of independence, Algeria has been in contact all over the world with modernity. Of course, of course economic modernity, uh, political modernity, new institutions, and cultural modernity too. But in the society, we have a majority of the society which is still under the pressure of a hard economic situation, but also under the pressure of traditional understanding of what we call Islam. Traditional meaning here, a bad knowledge of Islam itself by Muslims themselves. Muslims do not know well what Islamic thought is about and how even to make a distinction between Islamic thought and Islam as a system of belief. It's a difference because Islamic thought provides with intellectual approach of belief, intellectual explanations, intellectual approach of the whole history with the critical tools like historians are using today but the large majority of people are not aware about it. So they have collective representation of an idealized Islam, 
in the time of the prophet. And this creates the difficulties which I mentioned to move all the society towards a democracy. And we have this struggle between secularized categories, social categories, very much secularized like in the West, claiming a state, claiming political institutions as they are in the West to, to move quickly towards democracy, and you have a large majority who, which, are, who, which is unable to follow that move towards democracy and the culture of democracy. Without the culture of democracy spread in the society, you cannot achieve more, uh, democracy. So we have all these tensions everywhere in every society. Uh, the difficulties you mentioned, the contradiction you mentioned, uh, they are not only religious. Not only, I mean, not absolutely only. not. Also absolutely political. not. There are, you have, you have uh, great difficulties in the econo economic life. Okay, but the religious part. In financial system. Yes. Uh, if we talk about the religious uh, part, there we have the orthodox institutions of Islam. Uh, we have the political mov movement of which we call fundamentalist movement, which are usually not in power. And on the other side... Sometimes they are in power. Yeah, for example in Iran. In Iran but they are in power. Yes. Uh, what is the major contradiction to secularized understanding of democracy is the is that the orthodox institutions, for example, Al Azhar in, in no. Egypt, or are there the political power which uh, who doesn't want major changes in the uh, political system? Yes, the what problem. Is the, the problem. Biggest? The main problem in my view, is of course economic, yes. but even more, the state and the political elites. The political elites couldn't find solutions for a modern education addressed to the whole population in each country. Because only modern education can prepare people for a democratic regime. You cannot have a democratic institutions if you do not know, for example, the importance of separating the religious sphere of human existence and the political sphere of human history. And this, unfortunately, is not yet explained clearly to people through education, not to speak about the media and the official discourse, because the majority of the states which emerged in all Muslim countries, all, all of them without exception, because I remind that all Muslim countries have been colonized since 19th century. And the independence, the political independence, has been recovered only after the Second World War. And this required wars. We call it wars of liberation. So the state in all these countries is newly built. It emerged through the struggle for liberation. So the legitimacy of the state is based on the war for liberation. It is not based on a historical process going back for centuries like we find in France or in England or in Holland or in European countries. The building of the state goes back to almost medieval ages without interruption. It's not the case in all Muslim countries. We have a rupture between the political state run by 
the caliph in the medieval ages and then by the sultan with the uh, empire or in the Mughal in, in, in India or the Shah in, the, in Iran, etc. But this is a traditional form of the state where religion and politics were mixed, which is not the fault of Islam as a religion. It is the fault of the state and the culture available to that state up to the Second World War, the end of the Second World War. So after the liberation, the state wanted to have a legitimacy so that people can obey to the state. Without legitimacy, people cannot obey to a state. And these states are in need of using Islam as a source for political legitimacy. This uses an ideological use. It is not a scientific cultural use of Islam. So a religion is manipulated by political elites for other purposes than the purpose of teaching the believer how to be a person, how to be an ethical person, how to develop a spirituality for human person, to enhance the level, the, the, the dignity of human person. So there is a derivation that, uh, towards an ideological use of religion. This is what has happened in all Muslim countries. Which means that the religious sphere or the, the religion as a source of spirituality and ethic teaching is deteriorating. Mm. And Everywhere mm. is deteriorating. And the state itself didn't get the legitimacy it wanted because it, the state has participated itself to this deterioration, is responsible of this de deterioration. So the state has lost on both sides, mm -hmm. on the side of religion, because he didn't pre provide the appropriate education to show the value, spiritual and ethical value and function in the society of religion, Islam, and other religions, all religions are meant for this, and it didn't develop either a political system of legitimizing the state in the society. That's why we have a, a crisis, a political crisis, a cultural crisis, and a religious crisis. And in my view, this is the most important factor, which is creating all the troubles that we witness everywhere in Islamic world, and sometimes horrible civil wars. So the call for democracy is also a call for democratic Islam, oh. because this is mixed. Yes, I would say not necessarily a democratic Islam. What happened in Europe about Christianity? Europeans also have a religion. We, we tend to forget that these people also have a religion. Christianity is a religion, and it is a religion which has many, uh, many characteristics very similar in the teaching that we find in Islam. What happened in 18th century in Europe is precisely the emergence of a new culture, which we call the modern culture. And this new culture tells that religion is the private affair of the human person. It is not the responsibility of the state to tell you what to believe and uh, where is the orthodoxy, etc. This is not the responsibility of the state. It is the responsibility of each person, each family, which raises the children, to go to the ulama, those who are in charge in teaching religion. This is one part, and the other part is the citizenship, the space of citizenship where people live in relation to the state, and the state has the obligation to respect the people through a social political contract, 
with people. This new idea, which is the basic idea of modernity, is not taught in our system of education even today because we are teaching something wrong. When we say that Islam mixes between politics and, and religion, we do something wrong because in Islamic theology, every Muslim is free to participate to the interpretation of the Quran and to confront their opinions about this interpretation. No one Muslim can impose on the others his own interpretation of the Quran. The interpretation has to be discussed among ulama mujtahidun, which means those people who are trained intellectually in religious sciences to discuss with their colleagues how to reach a relevant interpretation of a verse. This is the reality of the theology in Islam. I say Islam is theologically protestant. I mean, they have the same conception of the freedom of examination of the Holy Scripture as Protestant had in, from inside the church. Luther, when he made this revolution against the church, wanted to, to establish this freedom for Christians in Europe. Islam had this freedom since the beginning. What happens, what happened is that the state came into play since the Omeyyad period, 661 when uh, uh, Muawiyah took power in Damascus. And he put religion under the control of the state. And he confiscated the freedom of examination of the Holy Scripture, which is the right of every Muslim. And since that time, never Islam has been free from the control of the state, whatever has been this, the form of this state, whether the Caliphate or the Sultanate or the Emirate or the Shah or, or, or today, the, 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 the new regimes which are struggling for uh, having a democratic form. So this is extremely important, but not clearly taught like this, w to show the stakes, the theological state stake of our discussions and struggles today, and the political state of these discussions, and make it clear. So, so the, through this confusion, unfortunately, people are struggling on the basis of ignorance. Uh, are there uh, laws? rules in the Sharia which uh, doesn't, uh, we cannot be adapt by a modern society. For mm -hmm. example, rights of women and so on. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. This is precisely a matter of ishtihad, as we call it. Ishtihad meaning the intellectual endeavor to adapt the teachings which have been delivered in the beginning of medieval ages, when all the problems that we know today, all the conceptions of equality, of citizenship, of democratic institutions on which we are speaking today, didn't exist. It didn't exist. Some people are saying that it exists in the Quran, but this is what we call projecting back ideas and conceptions which are special to our time today. This is a psychological and mental projection. It has no existence in the reality. That's why we need Muslims who would recover the freedom which I mentioned, the intellectual freedom and the political freedom, to work and to reactivate all these confrontations which existed between several schools of theology and law in medieval ages. This is also an important point that I would like to underline. For example, in 9th, 10th centuries, we had many schools of theology. 
We had Ash'arit, we had Imamit, we had Mu'tazilit, we had many schools. And these people were discussing among themselves to reach a consensus through discussion, not through power from above, from the state. This is very, very important, which means that it is wrong to say that Islam is against democracy. Absolutely wrong. Theologically, it is open, provided that the state gives the freedom to those who are able to practice this search and to bring solutions which are proposed to all Muslims. This, because unfortunately, is, is not done. So, for example, for the women, we have to reinterpret all the verses, and there are many in the Quran. There is even a surah, long, one of the longest chapters is called surah, uh, chapter on women. It deals with women issue. All this has to be reinterpreted, but reinterpreted according to the rules I have mentioned, which are rules of freedom of examination, not according to the imposition from above or from ulama who work for the state, under the control of the state. This is absolutely against the Islamic theology. Mm -hmm. So would you also historically mean that, uh, for example, the Shia, said that Ijtihad was always open till today. Yes, but still, in you have the Marja Taqlid. Yes, yes, Marja Taqlid. And Marja Taqlid in, yes. uh, doesn't allow enough room for freedom and confrontation. Yes. Ah, yes, because Marja Taqlid is the authority coming from above. Of course, it is above the tradition, not above the, from above the, I mean, the state. There is a difference because tradition is collective. It's shared by people. It is less dangerous than the state. But still, the freedom as we know it today in modern context is the freedom of the person. Well, the French philosopher Descartes, for example, has formulated this freedom when he said, I am, I, me, as a person, I have the conscience to be a person, I am. I feel that I am a person. Therefore, no, 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 excuse me. I think, I think, I think. Therefore, I, je pense, donc, je suis. I think. I think as an autonomous person. First person, I. Therefore, I am. I feel that I have an existence as a thinking person. And this is the autonomy of reason. And when this is the freedom. And in the ninth century, as, as people uh, declared that the doors of the Ijtihad the, yes, <coughs> yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and uh, as the Sunni said, the Ready? Okay. Okay. Yes, the problem of Ijtihad is not well explained to Muslims themselves. When we say, for example, if we start again or reactivate the ijtihad, we shall solve all the, uh, uh, the problems which are facing today. It's not enough. Because ijtihad is an intellectual activity. And the intellectual activity is made with conceptual tools, is made with a kind of reason is made with a posture of reason. I mean a posture of reason which accepts to submit all its activity to a revealed text or a reason which says, I cannot submit any of my activity to something which is outside me as a reason, which is the case of modern reason. So there is a split. If you exercise ijtihad inside, inside the limits which are accepted by theological reason, that you have 
to respect absolutely the holy text as it is. Then you are not generating a modern Ishtihad. You have to confront the position of your theological reason with the positions of philosophical reason, as Spinoza, as Descartes, as Hegel, as Kant, etc., have uh, displayed it and used it. We, in Islamic thought, we have eliminated our philosophers. Since the death of Ibn Rushd in 1198, the end of 12th century, there is no philosophy anymore in the line of uh, Greek philosophy, which is different from the line of the Ishraqi philosophy, which survived in Iran. Ishraqi philosophy has still these metaphysical limits, which do not exist in modern philosophy. In modern philosophy, reason is totally autonomous, and it has the responsibility the intellectual responsibility of controlling any proposition which is uttered by a human being in the society, everywhere. This is the criticism, the rational criticism of everything which is done in the name of reason. In religious reason, theological reason, you have the argument of authority. Authority being the authority of the holy texts. And you cannot raise issues about the holy text. You have to believe in it, bila kayf. Bila kayf, which means without asking how, without asking why. Why you can ask in the limits. So this is the big difference. It's not enough to pronounce the word ishtihad and to say, let's come back to ishtihad. No, 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 it's more difficult than this. And I explained in the beginning that the difficulties to go to democracy is precisely this point. To understand this, so it is not enough to say the word ishtihad and democracy in the end. Yes. Again, please. It's not enough to pronounce the word ishtihad and to ask for reactivating ishtihad, and that's it. You have to make a big option, which is decisive for everything you are going to do. And this option is to say, I'm going to have the posture, the, the, the modern posture of reason, which is autonomy, which is criticism to everything coming to reason from outside. Or you say, me, I am a believer. I submit my reason to the teachings and the text of the, uh, of the holy text uh, which are revealed. OK? It's a possibility. But then you will generate all the clashes in which we are engaged. In Algeria, for example, this is the clash. When we say these are secularists and these are uh, Muslims or, or believers, but the clash, the deep clash, is in the mind. The separating branches are in the mind. And this you cannot solve only by killing people or through terrorism or through, you have to solve this through education. Yes. But and this education is lacking. The state is, all states, some now are doing that already, but many states are not yet ready to give to children and students this education, which is basically philosophical, what I'm saying. And philosophy is essential to democracy. There is no way to reach democracy without this education of human mind to know how to think in the full respect of all the opinions which are given by people living together in a democratic regime. 
there is no authority imposed. So you say that uh, it is not even necessary to bring philosophy and uh, religion, rationalism and belief uh, to each other. It is not necessary. No, no, no. I'm not saying this. Excuse me. Yeah, no, no, I'm I know. But I, I'm that saying necessary? that we have to examine yes. religious beliefs. I'm not saying eliminating religious yes. No, 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 no. This is important. And I'm fighting here in UNESCO, for example, for this to generate an education where reason is responsible for the teaching. In the, in the meaning I mentioned about intellectual responsibility, I have not the right to teach to my students uh, Sunni Islam or Shi'i Islam in its orthodox expression. I have no right. Because there are many orthodoxies which are opinions. But I have to teach them how unorthodoxy emerges and is built as a system through history to understand what it is. And to not confuse orthodoxy as the full expression of the religious truth and orthodoxy as an ideological ge uh, genesis of opinions by a category of people in a society who come to power and impose it as the full expression of religious truth. That's what is happened, what has happened. Look, all the divergences which exist between Sunni Islam and Imami Islam. This started from the second century of the Hijra in Islam. And we didn't yet clarify these oppositions. We are just saying it's different. And we cannot explain why is it different like this. And what's the meaning of this difference? This would be a modern Islam. Examination and examination with the tools of history. Kind of yes. Yes. Not uh, only the tools of the lawyer, the faqih, walayat al-faqih, as Khomeini tells in his book. Yes, has to be discussed. Discussed in the freedom. And the democracy is based on the confrontation of all the opinions existing in the society. And you go to a consensus through this confrontation, through these debates. No democracy without free debate. So it's not the religion which is, which is the greatest difficulty and problem no, no. for this society to reach religion. a culture which no, no, is... It's not religion. Many people are repeating Islam is against the democracy. Islam is... A, no, no, no. Islam, like any religion, is only one factor among other factors which are always in, in, in play, I mean, in interaction to generate new situations, new solutions, new debates. Religion is a factor, like economic factor, like the education factor, cultural factor. So it's not all the force which decides uh, about everything. It is not. And how do you see uh, the impact of the discussion in Iran now for the Islamic world? What's going on? Iran is discovering slowly is discovering the things I am explaining. Muslims in Iran are discovering what's the importance of religion to be independent from politics. The more a religion is independent for, from politics, the more it gains a spiritual authority which is respected freely by people. A religion has to be respected freely not through power. This is a, a very enriching experience. Unfortunately, we need all this trouble in the society and even all these uh, civil wars and crimes in the name of religion to reach the possibility 
to go through this experience of discovering what's the function of religion and what function of the state and politics. The Europeans went through too. French people have killed each other in the great revolution, like we are doing, for the same reason. For this opposition I have explained between theological reason and philosophical scientific reason. And still they are struggling, it's not finished. So this is because this is, it concerns the mind itself, the psychological configuration of the faculties of mind. I mean reason, imagination, memory, affectivity, all this is working here and here. How can you expect uh, to establish a democratic uh, educational system when the political system is corrupt? Yes, this is our problem. This is our problem. That's why still, unfortunately, we have to go through a lot of trouble. Bad trouble. This is the necessity of, of living in societies. All societies through history knew that it's not uh, absolutely new. Of course, the scale now is, 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 is greater because we have all this technology to kill and to uh, make in prison or to control people. People in the medieval ages were not controlled by, like we are controlled today. Each individual is controlled everywhere in, uh, on the earth. In medieval ages, you, cou you could, uh, uh, even in one city, in Isfahan or in Shiraz or in Rai or Baghdad, you can, if you have some trouble, you go to a friend and uh, the friend you live there, nobody knows uh, uh, that you are there and you are safe. Today, this is impossible. The um, problem is not only changing Sharia. Oh, no, 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 this is, uh, this is too simple. <laughs> no, no, and the biggest no. responsibility is the political. To me, the, the is politician. political and the responsibility of education. I would like that people look to the books used in, at schools in each country. How do we teach the history of our own country? The way we teach it, is generating war in the mind of people. I have no time to explain this. But if you read the books, the handbooks which are used currently by children in the elementary school, secondary school, and even by students at the university, the way we speak about Islam, the way we speak about history of Islam, or history of our country, is totally wrong. We create mythologies. We do not teach history. And this is extremely dangerous. So the problem of education is a key issue to overcome what I call the difficulties to reach democracy in Muslim society. It's wrong to focus just on Islam, 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 as if Islam were, it, it replaces God, God himself. I call it an ideological monster, which has been generated by society. An ideological monster. Because we, we, we tell always Islam, Islam, without analyzing like I tried to do. How do you see the role of the Muslims living in Europe? For the discourse in Unfortunately, Arabic. they are still under the influence of their countries of origin. Can you repeat Turks, it? Yes. Turks are under the control of their country. Algerians, the same. Moroccans, uh, Pakistanis, all Muslims have a relation to their country, which is normal, of course. They cannot forget their language. They cannot forget their traditions. And they are longing after this because they are living in countries where this doesn't, doesn't exist uh, in the same way, but in the same time, they are bringing these wrong representations about Islam. And they are referring to the wrong re representation 
about Islam, instead of taking advantage of the democratic climate and the libraries and the institutions of learning which exist in Europe to develop this new modern ijtihad which we mentioned. I do not see many Muslims doing that. There are some, fortunately, but not enough to change the mentality of the important minorities. Like in France, we have well, four millions. Four millions, it's almost uh, one, one, uh, one nation. And it's not enough to have two or three or ten people uh, aware of this uh, importance of education, modern education, and the rest are just repeating what they read in the newspapers or what is, is told to them uh, through the tradition. And uh, racism and uh, political, uh, political uh, not openness towards minorities, of course, doesn't help that European countries <coughs> yes. help yes. to change this issue. Oh, yes, yes. The Europeans are not helping a lot. I, t I try, I, I am fighting to create institute, modern institutions of learning for Muslims in European countries. Yes. I, 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 I do this in every European country. I speak like this and they, I try to explain that these Muslims cannot be left like this without a proper education so that they can have a critical relation to themselves, to Islam, to their knowledge, and they can handle it with modern tools, as Christians are doing and Jew Jews are doing, living in, 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 in this. But so far, uh, I didn't succeed, really, to, 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 to develop these institutions. This is another problem. Thank you, Mr. Akram. It was great. Thank you. Uh, I have formulated somewhere uh, during the preparation of this documentary that the democratic organizations in Europe and the European Union can mediate a dialogue between uh, some Muslims here in Europe which want to bring the democratic in their country yeah, 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 yeah. and the Orthodox institutions yes, or yes, and yes, the state yes, yes, yes. that democratic organizations in Europe could mediate because, yes. for example, in Italy, there is no atmosphere of dialogue between Orthodox and liberals. Yes. The liberals say they are uh, the Orthodox or the fundamentalists because they are medieval, they are, they are not modern, they are not educated for a modern society, and they say they are upper class, they are not believers. Yes, they yes. always exclude or exclude each other. Yes, yes, there is no dialogue. Yes, yes. So European organizations could mediate. Yes, and European yes. Muslims could, uh, together with European organizations. These two are trying to do here. Yeah. This is something I thought of it a year ago. Mm -hmm. Which one? Ganz kurz, ganz kurz. Ist es okay, Herr Alex? Ja. 